In a close-knit community, tragedy struck with the death of 16-year-old Mia Campos, a pregnant teenager whose life was tragically cut short. Mia disappeared without a trace, only to be discovered deceased half a mile from her home. As details of her gruesome death emerged, the entire town was left in shock, pondering the circumstances that led to such a brutal end for such a promising young life. Join us as we delve into the sorrowful final days of Mia's life and the subsequent quest for justice. It has been less than two months since the heartbreaking murder of 16-year-old Mia Campos and her unborn son, Sebastian. The case remains actively investigated, with new details potentially surfacing post-recording due to the ongoing legal processes. As this is a preliminary investigation, no convictions have been made, and it is crucial to remember that all mentioned individuals are presumed innocent until proven guilty. However, Mia's family, alongside investigators and prosecutors, strongly suspects a particular individual's involvement, though the justice system ensures everyone receives a fair trial. Our coverage aims to elevate awareness and provide additional support to Mia's family as they navigate this profound sorrow. Mia was a lively and hopeful 16-year-old from Loganville, Georgia, a small town where everyone is familiar with one another. Despite initial shock at her pregnancy, Mia's family welcomed both her and her unborn child, Sebastian, eagerly anticipating his arrival. Mia's father, Edward, a former DJ, was immensely proud of her, especially when she began DJing at local events. Known for her radiant smile and kindness, Mia was beloved by many and grew up in a nurturing environment supported by her family through her journey into young motherhood. The Campos family's unity was only strengthened following Mia's tragic demise. Her older brother Alexis initially struggled with her pregnancy, feeling guilty for having introduced Mia to the baby's father, 20-year-old Jesus Monroy, and unwittingly allowing an adult to groom his sister. Over time, however, the family overcame their reservations, focusing on supporting Mia with love and encouragement rather than judge. Mia had hoped for Jesus to be a part of her and her child's lives, but her father, Edward, gave Jesus the option to step aside, confident the family could manage without him. On July 14, 2024, as Mia was just weeks away from giving birth, she and her family were preparing for her baby shower. That evening, everything appeared normal as they enjoyed family time together, unaware of the tragedy that was about to unfold. Just before 10.30 p.m., Mia informed her brother that she was going out to meet Jesus at a nearby Quick Trip gas station to grab some snacks. This plan didn't raise any concerns, so her brother thought little of it. At 10.31 p.m., their home's Ring doorbell camera recorded Mia leaving the house for what would tragically be the last time. When Mia hadn't returned after 30 to 45 minutes, her family grew anxious and began to call her cell phone repeatedly, but received no response. They reached out to Jesus, who claimed he hadn't seen Mia since the previous day, contradicting Mia's stated plans to meet him. Alarmed, Edward asked Jesus to come to their home, which he did, accompanied by his own father. Fortunately, Mia had enabled location sharing on the Life360 app, and using this, the family quickly located her phone half a mile away. Edward and Jesus drove to the location, where, after searching the area, Jesus grimly discovered Mia's body. Mia was found face down, approximately 20 to 30 feet from the road, with no visible signs of severe trauma other than a slight nosebleed. Edward immediately attempted CPR, but it was devastatingly clear that Mia had already passed away. The scene was a parent's worst nightmare. Edward noted his growing concern when Mia hadn't returned by 10.45 or 11 p.m., and Jesus' behavior only heightened their alarm. Jesus appeared detached and even fell asleep in his car during the search. Moreover, he asked Mia's brother Alexis not to disclose to the police that he was the father of Mia's unborn child. By 1 a.m., police and emergency services had arrived, and Mia's family explained that she had left the house to meet someone she knew. 
it quickly became apparent that Jesus, despite his initial denials, was a central figure in the investigation. His behavior and inconsistent statements immediately raised red flags. Initially, he misled the police by describing himself merely as a close family friend, not as Mia's boyfriend or the father of her child. During a confrontation, Mia's sister Marisol implored him in Spanish to stop lying and come clean, but Jesus remained uncooperative and clammed up, refusing to engage further. On July 17th, Jesus was arrested for providing false statements to investigators. This happened shortly after Mia's autopsy results confirmed her death was a homicide caused by asphyxiation. Initially, Jesus wasn't charged with Mia's murder, but on July 23, 2024, authorities formally charged him with malice murder, felony murder, feticide, and aggravated assault for the deaths of Mia and her unborn child. Although he remains innocent until proven guilty, Mia's family strongly believes he is responsible. Several factors fueled their suspicion. For one, Jesus claimed to live 20 minutes away, but arrived at their house remarkably fast when Mia went missing. Why did he bring his father with him to search if they didn't yet know she was hurt? Then, there was the bizarre moment when Jesus jumped on Mia's body when they found her, raising Edward's concern that he might have been trying to explain why his DNA would be on her. Phone records revealed more damning evidence. Jesus' phone was in the same location as Mia's at the time of her death, despite his earlier claims of not seeing her that night. More chillingly, Mia had saved a screen recording of their messages in which Jesus had urged her to meet him, delete the texts, and even clear them from her recently deleted folder. The last message Mia ever sent at 10.37 p.m. was to a friend, I'm scared. The case is still ongoing and investigators continue to piece together evidence. With each new discovery, the picture of what happened that tragic night becomes clearer. While many questions remain, we hope that more clues and proof will emerge in the future, helping Mia's family find the justice and closure they desperately seek. As the investigation continues, each court hearing brings new revelations that grip both the local community and the public. The town has rallied around Mia's family, offering support in any way they can, through vigils and memorials. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. We dive into the most intriguing and shocking crime stories each week, and your support means the world to us. Until next time, stay safe and take care of yourself. See you in the next video.